G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. Uh, just a little warning or just a little um, word of advice that in this video there is a sequence where there is a decomposing mouse and um, it's at the time written on the screen in the video. So if you don't like to see a mouse decomposing underneath the soil and see what nature looks like in real life and just be aware that, um, just to look away from the screen at that time. Okay, so let's get on with the video. My mango tree is doing really well up here on the hill. And I was just about to start planting some more of my fruit trees out here in my food forest beside my swale. When I went into my computer and started reading some of your comments. Today I'm going to show you how I planted the mango tree. So a couple of months ago I posted this video about yeah, how I planted the mango, mango tree. tree. Yeah. And someone, it was uh, Maria Meyer, wrote a comment and said, Mr. Weedy, next time try planting trees this way. Watch this first video. And this one shows the entire process. Yeah, so I looked at that link and it was about planting a tree the Ellen White style. Ellen White method. So I googled that and uh, Ellen White was yeah, a woman in the 1800s who had an idea to plant a tree and uh, I'll share that with you on this video. I tried this method, was amazed. Seems pretty good. Once upon a time there lived a woman named Ellen White. She was born in America and became a writer. In 1891, after her husband died, she sailed on a ship to Australia and bought a property just south of here. Now, the soil on her property was very, very poor and she was worried that she couldn't grow wonderful, colourful, natural, clean, organic food just like she'd hoped for. For her, it was a matter of survival to figure out a way to do that. And one night she had a dream, or a night vision as they called them back then. It was an inspirational dream that gave her a method of planting a fruit tree so that it would thrive. For many years, she planted her trees in this way and became very well known for growing the biggest, juiciest and sweetest fruit in the area. Although Ellen White was a writer, she actually never wrote this method down, but for many years her grandson, Herbert Clarence White. He spent time planting trees with his grandmother Ellen and learnt it directly from her. But he never wrote it down either. Then, in 1950, a 13 year old boy by the name of Lin Huag was attending a tree planting class given by Herbert Clarence White himself. The good thing is that Lin, he did write it down. He's about 83 years old today and I saw a video of him planting a tree and I wrote it down too. Now, I can share it with you. This is what it looks like, and it goes like this. First you've got to start by digging a hole, and it needs to be about a metre deep and about a metre wide. And you'll notice when you start digging that the soil looks different as you go down. So the nice soil on top, that's the top soil. And the next layer is the subsoil. And if you go deep enough, you'll get down to the clay in most cases. You need to use your topsoil later. So just leave that on the side of the hole. So there's an old stump there, or an old root there. It's dead, so I'll leave it there. And that'll rot and become food for my tree. But I just wanted to show you that, that I want to make this, this hole square, see? Because I think when you make a round hole, I think the roots, they, they just keep going around and around the hole. All right, but I think if you make a square hole, the roots come out like that and then they hit the corner and then they go in. And they go outside the hole, they go into the soil there. So that's why I'm making it a square hole. I think the tree's gonna do better. I think the tree's roots are gonna spread out underneath the ground a lot more. See, what we wanna try and do, we wanna try and mimic the forest. And this hill up here has been bare hill for probably many, 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 many years. 
So there's no big old roots and stuff in the soil anymore. There's no organic material underneath here. So I'm going to fill it up with organic material as if I've chucked a forest in here. See, this is just all clay. But I'll put that around the back here to hold the water and I'll take the topsoil out. I'm just going to keep digging. As you can see, I take the clay out and I put that on the side of the hole downhill. So I use that as like a catchment area for the water. Now, you'll need some ingredients for your hole. You'll need some of your topsoil and you'll need some leaf mold and you'll need some compost. And so you gotta keep some of your topsoil when you dig your hole, just keep that aside or put it in a bucket. And, uh, Two buckets of this uh, forest leaf mulch. This is the stuff that's got nice, uh, some the nice mycelium, the nice uh, fungi in it. See, in a natural system, all the nutrients and minerals come from the animals and plants that have lived and died upon the soil, but also the rocks and the stones that are found in the soil. Now, if you think of a healthy forest floor as being like a big supermarket. It has all the minerals and nutrients that the plant needs. And the fungi, it's like the shop assistant that helps assist the plant in finding and transporting all these nutrients up into its roots, out into its leaves, and into its fruit. You've got to try and think the way a forest thinks. All the animals that live in the trees, the birds, the spiders, the mice and the bats and everything else. They're all eating from the tree and they're all pooing and they're all dying. The tree is even feeding itself by dropping the leaves and twigs and branches, all of which becomes food for the microorganisms which release the nutrients back into the soil that can feed the plants again. So I've got to get two buckets of that. Then I've got to get two buckets of compost. So you've got your topsoil and your leaf mold and your compost. And you've got to mix in some calcium and some phosphate as well into this mix. So calcium, the tree needs calcium. So you can go and buy some dolomite lime, or you can buy some gypsum, um, or you can get eggshells or even a dead animal. Think about the bones. And then you have to get your phosphate. It's from bones, it's from dead animals. So I use blood and bone. I think you'll also find lots of phosphate in Prussia dust. Seawater is full of micronutrients and it's also full of minerals. Seawater, it's even got gold in it and it's very similar to human blood. But plants love seawater, not too much, about one litre in a, in a watering can once a year. And kelp as well has a lot of trace minerals and um, it's very high in nutrients, micronutrients. But just a handful is enough. In the Ellen White description, there's also um, an air pocket at the bottom of the hole and you can use a pot or a bit of pipe. But I'll explain that later. So you've got all your ingredients, but you still need some Manure. And you'll also need some mulch. And you'll also need a big stone as an anchor to put underneath the tree. So 
So mix your topsoil, your leaf mold, your compost, your calcium, your phosphate and your kelp and mix it all together and then divide it into two piles. One half of the mixture goes in the bottom of the hole and the second part of the mixture goes on the top of the hole. And in the middle of the hole, we just have topsoil. This is gonna be yummy, so yummy. We're basically just delivering a forest floor to this tree. I can't wait to see it in a couple of years. Now we're gonna put some stones on the bottom. I'm gonna use crusher dust. So this is where you need your stones. The stones help the electromagnetic current move through the soil, move up and down the stem from the roots to the leaves. And all plants need electricity. So then you got your crusher dust, okay? Crusher dust, you can call it cracker dust or volcanic rock, paramagnetic rock, basalt, road fill, rock dust, metal dust, metal rock, rock metal, I don't know. Try some of those. And it's also got phosphate. Okay, so I'm down in the hole and um, the Ellen White method, they See, she suggests that you put some sort of an air pocket down the bottom of the hole. And, um, and I think that she thought that because in a real forest there's... Imagine the root of a big old tree that's dug down in the soil somewhere and the tree dies. And all the microbes eat the, eat the wood. And um, sort of basically leaves a hole in, in the soil, doesn't it? So that's what we want to sort of recreate in this hard... In this hard clay soil. So what we want to do is we want to put an air pocket down the bottom and I don't want to use a plastic thing because I don't think they you I mean, you, you could do something else. Because in nature, it's the big old root that's down there, right? So I've got a few old dead roots here and I've got a bit of, bit of, did old, bit of dead wood and um, it's sort of very airy and sort of aerated and old and light. So I'm going to just make a pile of that down the bottom and um, that'll, be, that'll be my air supply. So my soil sort of remains aerobic down around the roots, around the rhizosphere, as they say, as they call it. So I'll put that in the middle. I'm gonna put a hessian bag over the top of that because that'll, that'll help keep the air pocket. So after you put in your little air pocket, then just cover the next third of the hole with topsoil. And remember, every layer, you want to stamp it down. You want to stamp it down so it doesn't sink. Okay, so we're going to take the plant out now. Nice and gently. I'll just see if I can just... just spread the roots out a little bit. Yeah, you want to spread the roots out a little bit because they've just been going round and round and round and round in a little pot. Yeah, you want to kind of help them find a new direction. I might go and get a, I might go and get a big stone actually. Okay, we're going to put a stone in the bottom. It's like an anchor. And then your last third of your hole, you fill up with your mixture again, the second half of your mixture. I'll just scrape a bit of this off and level it out. I'm just gonna use cow manure because there's plenty of cow manure around here. Plenty of cow manure. You can use chicken manure or pigeon manure or horse manure. They get stronger, the birds are stronger, the big animals are not so strong, cow is good. <laughs> I 
Okay, now I'm just gonna put some worms on top. And these ones are the compost worms, and this is my compost bin, but it's not a very good one, because I haven't learned how to do it properly yet. I know for one, they don't like onions, and I've got tons of onions in this one, so. But there is a few, but I'm gonna learn how to do uh, a worm farm properly, and that'll be my next video, actually. But the worms in the compost, they're the wigglers, the wrigglers, and they eat the compost. And they live in the first, uh, like, um, six or eight inches of the soil. And then you've got the earthworms. The earthworms, they live deeper down in the soil, like two or three, maybe four meters down. And they go down into the soil and they come up and they eat the manure from the wrigglers. And then they go down into the soil and they're really good for aerating the soil, making all these tunnels down deep into the soil. So you want some compost worms around the tree so you get the earthworms to come up, okay? So I'm gonna put some mulch on top now and I uh, just wanna show you this area of the garden it used to be called my angel's corner. And um, this is the corner of the garden that I left grow, didn't touch it. So you see how weedy the weedy garden gets if no one touches it? So I put that on top. And when you water it, then you wanna put it in your salt water. You wanna use about one liter of your salt water in a nine liter watering can. And you can do that once a year. So that's how I've planted about five or six of my fruit trees now for my food forest. The next I need to plant will be my jackfruit, my blood orange, my lychee, my mulberry, my elderflower, and I've got a couple more mangoes and avocados to go to. And I know now from what I'm learning on this weedy hill that if these trees get the nutrients they need to reach their full potential, then when I eat them, so will I. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.